Hey guys, what's up? Matt here, uh, sitting in my studio. I just wanted to tell you guys, thank you so much for the support for And the Rest is Mystery. Uh, thanks for all the kind words, the way you guys have embraced it and helped spread it around and uh, help us raise some money for a good cause. So uh, we really appreciate it. And um, I'm not sure how many people will be interested in this, but I thought maybe I would sit down here and kind of go through the, the song and, and the session and sort of break everything down and show you what's going on and uh, what goes into making uh, a big production like this. So um, I know, you know, studio nerds like myself will find this kind of thing interesting, but maybe even if you're not, you know, you'll enjoy being able to hear stuff isolated and, and see kind of how it works. So, uh, so let's check this out. I'm going to open up my Pro Tools session here. As you can see, we've got... Uh, quite a few tracks in the song. So there's a lot going on. And, you know, in the interest of time, I probably don't have time to go through everything, but I'll show you, you know, the basic stuff at least. Let's start from the very beginning of the song, um, the, the nylon acoustic bit off the top. So this was recorded uh, with mid side technique, which um, is basically a way of stereo miking. Um, something you achieve by, by using a cardioid mic pointed at the source, and then a figure eight mic recording the sides, and then um, it's decoded by, basically for all intents and purposes, it's, it duplicates the figure eight pattern and it flips the polarity on one of those. All those combined make a stereo sound so it's a way to get to make you know an individual mono source sound a little bit wider um, for example this guitar here off the top I th thought it would work really well for something like that so um, very pleased with the sound I, I thought it just came out really beautiful it's um, it's really noisy you know I mean those mics are so hot obviously when you're recording a, a delicate finger pick part like that so you can hear me breathing you can hear um, my chair squeaking and, and all kinds of stuff, but that's just how it goes. Um, so that's soon joined by the uh, just a regular six string Taylor steel guitar, uh, two tracks left and right. Same as everywhere she has been Just an ordinary quiet girl Scarred by ordinary men He sounds amazing as always, as you can hear, of course. So she tries every single and I do a lot with, with um, effects, you know, sometimes subtle and sometimes not to sort of accentuate stuff, you know, like when he goes into this chorus here, you know, the on the word tries, the way the delay sort of goes on and on, you know, I spend forever on little details like that um, just to give it just the right feeling. So she tries every single day. Shakers, very exciting. The bass harmonics come in right there. So it's like. Maybe not so far away. In the 
blood that's not his own Has he squandered his inheritance For the only life he's known The trickiest thing about projects like this, um, for me anyway, the thing that takes the most time um, in the in the mixing phase of it is getting all the voices to sound like they belong in the same space because you're dealing with singers who a have vastly different sounding voices different ranges i'm recording on all kinds of different equipment so my biggest nightmare with stuff like this is to have it end up where it sounds like you know my voice is way louder than everybody else's or somebody is is overshadowing the rest of them or somebody is is uh seems too quiet and is getting the the short shrift you know um so i spend days and days trying to get everything to sound even and it's not that's not necessarily a volume thing because you know certain singers in in certain ranges the way they project um they might be harsh in a certain range they might be um quieter in another range so you know, even if the fader is quieter, they may sound louder and, and vice versa. So things it's quite a balancing act. Um, but like, you know, my vocal here is going through uh, my Retro 176, which is a great compressor. I uh, love it for vocals. And then it's also going for, through um, the Warm Audio Pultec knockoff that I've got here. So lots of tubes, lots of um, outboard to try to uh, soften it a little bit, uh, give it a little saturation, you know, um, all these things help. And, and what I end up doing is, is um, you know, I'll do individual printing on the different vocals and, and run them all through this chain. All the singers, you know, to, to every little things like that help them sound more similar. Obviously the settings will be totally different depending on, you know, how it was recorded and what it needs. But, um, these things all help, you know, the vocals to sit in, in the same space. So me and Neil together. He's known, so he tries every single day to wish upon a million miles away and pray. Is maybe not so far away. Man, being able to, to work with all these amazing singers and artists is uh, really a dream come true. It's kind of a just a songwriter's ultimate fantasy, you know, uh, just write whatever that is on your mind and, and, and present it to people who you know will be able to to pull it off and take it to a level that you can do yourself. So um, that was a real thrill. So uh, now the song kicks in, of course. <laughs> So that's going on um, at the same time as this guy. Drums. So I've got all the drums going through my hardware uh, Fatso, which I really like for drums. It's, uh, um, it's, it just rounds off the transients in a nice way, makes things sound a little less digital. Um, the compression is cool, but even if you're not using the compression circuit, it's, it's it, just the, the, the transformers themselves almost, it sort of acts as a limiter in a way. Um, and it, it, uh, it just sounds really cool on drums. I, uh, 
I don't always use it. You know, it's got a very specific sound, and sometimes I, it may not be what I'm going for, but I'll usually try it. And in this case, yeah, the drum kit's going through that. So uh, we recorded the drums uh, in the room behind you there, which you can't see. But um, yeah, we uh, we set up and did the drums for uh, Snow Globe, our most recent Christmas song, and and this track at the same time. And uh, man, Ernie just killed it, you know, as you can hear. Let's see, uh, guitars. That was my Mark IV here, which is my favorite amp of all time. Uh, split um, with a couple different cabinets, and it's got a little bit of Marshall blended in. And I used uh, my PRS uh, for the the rhythms on this song, um, which is a beautiful guitar. I love it. It's not my favorite for heavy rhythm stuff because the the, the low end can be a little bit muddy. Um, as compared to my ESP, it doesn't have quite the, the cut that the ESP does. But for this song in particular, I needed um, I needed a whammy bar for the the, the G thing. <laughs> And that's the only guitar I have with a whammy bar, so. Uh, but it ended up sounding really good, I think, you know. It's uh, nice, warm, sounds really wide, so. Uh, bass. The rhythm section together. entire mix is going through the SSL compressor here and the GML EQ. Uh, EQ is just adding a tiny bit of bottom and um, that's pretty much it. Guitars are going through the Neves um, again just adding a little bit of low end. So that's basically what's going on instrumentally and then of course the mighty Daniel Hyman makes his uh, debut here sounding incredible. Shame so overwhelming like a river Raging with its depth so deep and wide Legend of a promise to deliver To the other side And again, like I mentioned with Neil, I mean, getting to harmonize with Daniel, it's like pinching myself but you know as soon as he sent these tracks I just again I just got goosebumps because it's he just took the whole thing to a, a whole nother level the other side. <laughs> Send so many cool little background vocal parts too. So they ran! <laughs> Following the body call! And effects wise on the vocal. So they ran! Jumped on board! And at once their great adventure had begun! Following the body call! Don't. I keep it pretty simple. I mean, I've got. I've got a little reverb, of course. I've got a little bit of um, 
a, a spread, sort of a chorus, like the old AMS trick um, that I always use. And, uh, and then a little bit of delay and then beyond, you know, other echoes and delays, you just sort of um, automate, you know, according to the part of the song. Like if you want to hear this word, you know, echo a few times. <laughs> No predestination for an ordinary life We're designed to live for something more Actually, funny quick story about this part. Um, the little break here before Neil comes back in in this verse uh, was sort of a happy accident. Originally, it was just plowing straight through and... Um, we were, Ernie and I were in here editing the drums, getting the master take together. Um, you know, from, he recorded whatever three or four takes of the song and, and um, you know, we cut together the best bits and and whatever. And um, as we were doing the edit, there was a, a break in this part. <laughs> And we thought that sounded really cool, actually. And uh, so he's like, let me run back in there and, and let's let's record it like that. So we, we built that into the song. Um, happy accidents like that happen all the time. You know, that, that's the one of the great parts of, of making music. And you never know uh, what's going to make something even cooler. So uh, I always try to be open to these different ideas. So there's a lot going on in these choruses, um, <laughs> obviously. There's sort of a question and answer thing with, with these guitar harmonies. So that's going on. There's these clean guitars going on as well. You know, it's it's like a vocal phrase, and then the guitars will answer, and um, it sounds kind of silly on its own, I guess. But um, you know, uh, taken as a whole, it all, everything serves a purpose. little lead here and I think this is a lower octave yeah so together um, and all this lead stuff was a, a Kemper profile that I made of the JP2C which is this amp here um, sounds great as you can hear I love guitar harmonies, so um, they're usually all over everything that I do. And then there's other stuff too. Um, there's an organ in the chorus. about 100 million vocals so let's uh, let's check that out so there's a choir I do lots of choirs obviously and, and I do them in separate sessions and bounce them down um, do sub mixes so I don't just have hundreds and hundreds of tracks everywhere this is just an ah part I think it was like I want to say 12 tracks or something like that so this is all me
and then um, I did the main choir as well on the chorus. This was, I think, maybe 30 tracks. The rest, as they say, is mystery. And then I had, I had Neil and Leah um, sing a couple of the parts, or double a couple of the parts that I had done. Uh, so, like, here's Neil's part. The rest, as they say, is mystery. Again, these were all submixed in, in different sessions and, and brought in here to keep things clean. The rest of the saints, mystery. And then the three of us together on that. The rest of the saints, mystery. With the ah. Obviously, when you're dealing with productions this dense, um, mix-wise, it's constantly give and take. So, you know, uh, I do a lot of automation. Um, everything can't be loud all the time. So once this many vocals come in, you know, the guitars might have to go down a little bit or, or whatever. It's just a, it's a constant balance of trying to, to um, keep it sounding solid and keep it sounding heavy. But, uh, you know, you feature different things at different times. Things move in and out, and um, and that's just the way that that uh, the way that you have to do this stuff. Um, otherwise, these are things that you learn kind of early on, because otherwise, you know, you you'll, if, for example, in a chorus like this, so when so many tracks are coming in, there's so many vocals, there's so many guitars, etc. You know, and then the chorus is over, and it'll so suddenly sound like the whole song gets quiet. You know, if you're not balancing correctly, so. Um, these things are, are uh, they just come from experience, basically, you, you, um, and, and sort of feeling the song out. Here is Leah's vocal and her verse. Shelter from the fallout All the white nights melting away From a lifetime You know, it's a little bit different, I think, than, than what she usually does kind of range-wise. So, um, you know, she, I think she was a little bit nervous about being able to do it. And I said, no, you're going to sound great. And, and um, sure enough, she did. She killed it. So uh, I was, I was uh, really happy to have her on board as well. So after that, we've got Val Solo. Effects-wise on the solo, you know, that's sort of a, a personal preference thing. You know, I know Val doesn't like a lot of, a lot of like really loud effects because um, he likes to keep the clarity of the playing. So he likes a, a very specific delay setting and, and things like that. So I, I try to keep it pretty minimal um, for him, you know, but it really depends on what the guitar player wants. And, um, you know, I also will tend to send the the solo through some of the same effects that the lead vocal goes through um, just to give it the kind of same sense of space and and um, and uh, depth so uh yeah that was uh i think he used like a, a soldano profile for that <laughs> Call to me, the rest as they say is mystery Why you chose me, a broken life And 
I've got like four different keyboard sounds here. Obviously that sort of echoes the, the chorus at the beginning of the song and the acoustic bit. We've got another ah choir that I did. This is the same thing as before, basically uh, 12 tracks, I think it was. My counterpoint part. But unto a brand new day, we wished upon a million miles away to find out that you were waiting, never very far away. So now our story will go on. We say goodbye to broken hopes we dreamed upon and sail on to new horizons. Life was not so far away. And then uh, Neil's counterpoint part. You have made us your sons and daughters And you showed us the way for the broken hearted To finally be made whole To escape the shame of the things we've done And the pain of the things done to us uh, Those two together So now you have made us and then Daniel coming in with the with the sledgehammer for his grand finale. And the rest is mystery. So that's about it. Thanks to Neil, thanks to Daniel, thanks to Leah, uh, thanks to Val, thanks to Ernie, um, thanks to Emil from Ulterium for, for helping us put all this together. And, uh, and thanks to you for watching and, and uh, buying the song and, and helping support the charity and all that stuff. So we really appreciate it.